You will never lose body fat unless you do the following five things. All right, the first one is eat your target body weight in grams of protein. Probably the number one thing that clients uh, struggled with. And it wasn't until I was doing this for probably a good year or two before I started to kind of piece this together because a lot of people tell you they they eat lots of protein or you oh i love meat oh i mm -hmm. eat lots of i eat lots of protein or i have a protein shake every day and so they yeah. think that they're actually hitting good targets or optimal targets for building muscle and then when you actually start tracking and diving into it you realize oh wow they're they're barely getting what they need well let's back up for a second cuz you said building muscle i'm talking about losing body fat and i'm going to connect the two so first off it's eating your target body weight in grams of protein. So if your goal is to lose 30 pounds, and let's say that would put you at 150 pounds, then what you want to do is eat 150 grams of protein. Now, building muscle is important here because when people lose weight, the, the one of the biggest roadblocks uh, by far is the fact that the body pairs muscle down in order or in an attempt to slow down the metabolism. This is why you plateau so hard. Eating a high protein diet helps prevent that, especially when you combine it with some other things, which we're going to talk about. But also, studies also show the following. This is where it gets really exciting. Eating a high-protein diet suppresses your appetite significantly. Protein is very satiety-producing in comparison to fats and carbohydrates. So a high-protein 1,500-calorie diet, for example, versus a not-high-protein 1,500-calorie diet, one of those is going to make you feel much more satisfied. It is less likely to result in this ravenous hunger. And then lastly... In studies that control for calories, the higher protein version, even though the calories are the same, results in more pure body fat loss. So this is a, a big one. Well, and what that is, more so than it is the body fat loss, it's the muscle preservation, right? Yes. So this is what we just had a great yes. conversation with our friend Angelo over at Keon. And that was one of the questions that we asked is like, you know, when you talk about the entire, you know, health journey of building muscle, losing body fat, staying healthy, you know, at what point is it more important to hit a high protein diet when you're trying to build muscle or is it more important when you're in a calorie deficit and you're trying to cut? It becomes more important yeah. when you're already reducing calories. And I think that's what people don't realize is maybe they were eating a decent amount of protein or enough to be uh, okay for where their body weight is currently at. Then they decide, oh, I want to lose body fat. So they cut calories. And a lot of times some of those calories come from the protein. And now they're at a, at a low protein intake. And that's a surefire recipe for them to not only lose uh, weight on the scale, but to also yeah. lose muscle along the way. Right. Well, once you discern whether or not this is, it's not just a weight loss goal. This is a body fat specific we a lost goal of losing body fat. We have to consider preserving as much muscle as possible because we're trying to, uh, you know, build up this new composition mainly of of lean muscle mass. So we have to be able to be real focused on uh, preserving that muscle biomass. Yeah, costs. if you look at um, the studies on weight loss, when people cut their calories um, and don't increase their protein and don't do other things like strength training, which we'll get to, uh, forty percent of the weight, in some cases half come from muscle. So now you're just smaller. Your flabbiness is right around the same as it was before, but you have a slower metabolism and you've, and you've, re, you've made your metabolic health worse. Yeah. So this is why people have such, one of the reasons why people have such a tough time. And then of course the appetite part, right? The satiety, uh, if you could get, if you could keep cravings and hunger down, um, then your odds of success go through the roof and high protein does that. This also explains to a lot of people that have struggled with this before where you've gone and got your body fat tested, whether it be by a trainer or one of those body scans. And then you go on your weight loss journey with the intents of losing body fat. And you actually drop weight on the scale. You drop 10, 15, maybe even 20 pounds. And then you go back and you go retest your body fat. Oh, and you're excited to go see like, well, how did I drop? I was at 20 something, 25% before. Let's see where I'm down to. And you are baffled by what you get, which you get a test that shows you you're at the same body fat percentage or sometimes even gone up and what people all of a sudden go oh well, these things can't be accurate this mm. must be off where no it's more likely that what you did was you cut calories you probably cut protein too put yourself in a deficit and for every pound of fat you lost off your body you also lost a pound of muscle which puts you in the same position or a worse position from mm. a body fat percentage the percentage right. is still high Next up is to lift weights, and this is just connected to the first one, but uh, more important for muscle is to strength train. Your body 
is only ever as strong as it thinks it needs to be. It will only ever have as much muscle as it thinks it needs to have. Now, of course, there's genetic variances here, but for your body, okay, your personal body, it's not, it, it's never going to be stronger than you think it, it needs to be. Now, why? Well, muscle is expensive. It's a, it's metabolically expensive tissue. It costs a lot of calories. It costs a lot more calories than, than body fat. So for your body to have it or, or to keep this expensive tissue, it needs a reason. And strength training is that reason. When you lift weights and you stress the body in that way, your body says, we need this muscle. In fact, we need more muscle. We got to build it. Now, this also can contribute to a faster metabolism. When you lift weights and you strength train, you do it properly, oftentimes you end up with a faster metabolism, which makes fat loss much easier. So this right here, by the way, the studies on this are, are, are conclusive. When they compare different modalities of exercise and weight loss, only one of them results in pure body fat loss. The other one still result in muscle loss. And that's strength training. Strength training does that. So I, I love talking about both these back to back because they're interconnected and the biggest mistake I see with people that go on a fat loss journey and that lift weights, they do it in a circuit style or they, do, training, yeah. or they do too much volume, too much intensity, thinking more is better and you're going to get you more results. And you have to understand in the context of a low calorie diet where you're cutting calories uh, for you to be increasing intensity, increasing volume or running things that are endurance based like circuits and Tabata and stuff like that does not send a very loud signal for you, your body to build muscle. And even if you do send a loud signal, say you do a lot of strength training, but you just do too much of it and a lot of it, and you don't feed the body adequately, then you're not going to build muscle. And in fact, you may not even hold on to muscle. The body ends up paring it down because you're not getting adequate protein. So right. the two of those are interconnected and it's yeah. so important to have the right balance. We need to be less concerned with calorie burning. Yeah. And I think that's a big uh, misconception a lot of people have towards trying to lose body fat. They think that we need to burn calories by all means necessary. We need to strength train and strength train requires rest periods. And so this is something to consider with that and then adjust, you know, how we're eating is, is, is a lot better strategy. When Traditional we, strength training is what you need to do. When we all first met, this was one of the things that I think I was so drawn to, to the MAPS anabolic protocol that Sal had written because, uh, it took me a long time to get here as a trainer of realizing that, oh, I'm I'm doing the hard work with the diet with my client, like getting my client to hit their macros and reduce their calories. That's That in itself takes consistency and discipline and figuring out. And then once we had figured that out, the mistake I was making was, you know, trying to beat them up in the gym to burn more yeah. calories, yep. to your point, Justin. And what ended up being a much better protocol was a just a two day or three day full body That's routine right. of trying to build long rest periods, try and get strong, two, maybe three days tops of lifting and allow the diet to do the rest. And that made a huge difference. Next up is sleeping for eight hours a night or getting good sleep. So uh, there was one study that showed that compared two groups of people, both calorie restricted, so controlled for calories. One group got good sleep, the other group got bad sleep. The group that got bad sleep lost twice as much muscle uh, during that period of time. So getting poor sleep tells your body you're under a lot of stress. We need to reduce our caloric demand, so pare muscle down, and we need to improve our ability to build insurance or to build a savings account, aka body fat. So losing sleep or getting poor sleep and not having good sleep on a consistent basis primes your body for fat gain and muscle loss. It also messes with your hormones through this process and changes your cravings and ramps them up for the types of foods that you don't want to eat when you're trying to lose body weight. This is one of those ones that it, I feel like everybody knows, yet they still ignore. I, yeah. I, I don't know if we ever do an entire week of getting live callers where they end up, they, they write to us like all the issues they got going on. And, you know, some of it's just like, oh, hard plateau. I'm not losing body fat. I'm not building any muscle. Strength going down, chronic pain, all these things. And we're like trying to troubleshoot with them. And then sometimes we'll be have talking to them for like five, 10 minutes. And then we get to the, and then, so how is your sleep? Oh, I have a really hard time sleeping. I don't sleep at night. It's like, oh, we're trying to solve this with all these yeah. other band-aids and you're not even, and like, you're trying to figure it through programming. You think it's a diet thing. You think it's an exercise thing. You're thinking of all these things that you could be doing more of or fixing or a, a peptide or a supplement you should be taking. And it's like, 
if you actually just kind of let go of almost all of that and you just honed in on getting better sleep, it would solve literally 90% of all the problems that you're communicating. It does. Yeah, we it see does. this all the time. 100%. Uh, next up is avoid foods that come in boxes and wrappers, also known as ultra processed foods. Now, why should we avoid those? Are they inherently fat promoting? No, not necessarily. It's not really that. Although most of these foods uh, could be considered not healthy, um, especially when compared to whole natural foods. But that's not really the problem here. The problem is that these foods are engineered to make you overeat and they do a damn good job. In fact, when they use the same criteria that we determine uh, whether or not something is addictive, they determine they, they've created this criteria for tobacco, okay? When we use that same criteria, ultra processed foods fit perfectly in there. In other words, ultra processed foods, okay? Potato chips, Cheetos, candy bars, uh, you know, foods, again, that have a long shelf life, have a really long ingredient list, are addictive, and they will make you eat more. Again, there's other studies that show that the consumption of these foods will result in, in overconsumption of calories by five to 600 calories a day, every single Adds up day. Really quick. So if you're trying to lose weight, don't eat addictive foods <laughs> Or is this going to be an uphill battle? So this is one of my favorite things for us to discuss in long form on the podcast. There is a huge divide in the fitness space uh, between this in this conversation. You have the uh, hippie crunchy people that tend to fear monger around processed foods. That there's chemicals in them that are killing you, causing cancer, and they're horrible for you, and it's all bad, right? So there's that side. Then there's the science-based people that'll be like, listen, every study that they talk about and show, those are either done in rats or this the size or the amount of that isn't significant. So processed foods are totally good and fine for you. And really the answer is somewhere kind of in the middle of this. Like I absolutely utilize processed foods in my diet. I'm tracking right now. I'm documenting that whole process. And so you'll you see me use a protein bar and a shake. Those are highly processed foods. But when you are teaching a client who has battled with, uh, you know, obesity or weight gain most of their life, and they struggle with making good food choices, and a lot of those food choices they make are around processed food, the most important thing to communicate to them is not to fear monger around it and make them think that they're going to get cancer because of it or all the chemicals are in it, but to communicate what Sal's talking they about make you overeat. is that they they are designed to make you want to eat more. Period. And so if at all costs you can avoid them and choose a whole food, you are far better off. It doesn't mean that there does, there's not a place for a protein shake or a bar on the on the go. Yeah. I understand that, and nobody here is trying to fear monger around processed no food. No sense in making the process more difficult for yourself, you know? And that's really at the at the end of the road. You can make this a lot uh, more seamless, and, and uh, uh, so you don't have to put a lot of thought and effort uh, in terms of like, if I just focused on this one thing, which is to, to seek out whole foods, uh, a lot of this stuff's going to take care of itself. Yeah, look, if for most, the average person, if they avoid heavily processed foods, they'll lose something like 15 pounds. That's probably what's going to happen for most people. Just from doing that, not worrying about anything else, because they make you uh, overeat. That's what they're designed to do, and they're really good at it. And again, but if you judge them by the criteria uh, that we have already designed to determine whether or not something's addictive, by that same criteria, uh, these foods are, in fact, addictive and so avoiding them just make things a lot easier it's it's actually just really practical good advice again going back to like i don't think that we're trying to scare people around that it's just over years what we've learned training so many people is that oh wow if i could just convince my clients to eat whole foods i actually didn't tell i didn't need to tell them to weigh and measure yeah. and track mm -hmm. they i literally could just say hey when you're hungry eat yeah. Just make whole foods and go after protein. You've seen first. how this all plays out. Like that's the the beauty of training so many people. Like yeah. you see these tendencies and you see how this ends up. Now, last up is to stop weighing yourself. Now, I know it sounds crazy because you're trying to lose weight, but really, what you're trying to do is lose body fat. Uh, obviously, if you lost your leg, you would lose weight on the scale, but that's not exactly the kind of weight that you want to lose. You want to lose pure body fat. There are better ways to measure your progress, and the best thing to do is to do a combination of measurements, uh, which include things like energy, strength, performance, sleep, mood, and then you can throw something in there like a body fat test. Body fat testing is far better than weight, than weight on the scale because weight on the scale simply shows mass. In other words, if you lost 10 pounds of body fat right now and gained 10 pounds of muscle, you would be smaller because muscle is much more dense, much more fit, much more sculpted, faster metabolism, but you've lost zero pounds. Yep. Does that mean you're not 
progressing? Not at all. In fact, that would be a massive success. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the scale ruins people's days. It, it makes them think they're not progressing when they really are. It just messes things up for the most part. I just recently went on a rant on my Instagram and did a whole clip on this about the scale and not being tied to this because actually one of the best places to be when you are trying to reduce body fat and hold on to the amount of every bit of muscle you have, maybe even potentially build a little bit, you want to see little to no movement on the scale. And this includes somebody who's trying to lose 50 to 100 pounds, which is hard for sometimes someone like that to wrap their brain around that. You look at me, Adam, I need to lose 50, 100 pounds. Like it would be a good thing if I saw 10 pounds on the scale. No, not if we're strength training and hitting our protein intake. Not in the beginning. Yeah, at the very beginning, if I'm doing a really good job of feeding your body what it needs, hitting that protein intake and strength training, I should see a really nice even exchange of I lose a little bit of fat, I build a little bit of muscle. I lose a little bit of fat, I build a little bit of muscle. And so the scale kind of hovers around the same thing. But what's happening is you're getting stronger, you're getting tighter, the waist is coming in, but it's a slow, gradual process. And, and then at some point, your metabolism is sped up so much that then you do lose all the body fat. But in the very yeah. beginning, if you if you start well, a program room to do that. and lose a ton of weight right out the gates, it's typically a bad sign. I can't tell you how many clients I know that were you know addicted to weighing themselves that course corrected when we were doing all the right things because they didn't see movement on the scale fast enough. So that's why I like this as a tip because it really is a very deceiving tool for most people. And it's not that you can't possibly use it. It's just one of those things. It's like, you know what? If we're doing all the other things we're talking about, you're going to be just fine not weighing. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, we have a free guide. It's the benefits of eating whole foods. This gives you a shopping list. What foods are best for proteins, fats, carbohydrates. There's recipe samples. It's all based on real, whole, natural foods. And it's a free guide. It's totally free. You can get it if you go to wholefoodsguide.com or by clicking on the link in the description below. Yourself. Speaking of fat loss, okay, I just pulled some interesting- Why'd you point at me? Data of <laughs> Justin. Speaking of fat fat. I, I just, <laughs> I just <laughs> brought up some data and some interesting statistics, or should I say studies, on probiotics and fat loss. Hmm. Do you guys know there's actual studies that support probiotics for fat loss? I'm going to bring a, a couple of uh, things up for you. So one study- showed that probiotics help release the natural GLP-1 hormones that you produce in your body. So you can actually, so we all hear about the GLP-1s, right? You take these medications, mm. they make you want to eat less because that's what it does, right? GLP-1 hormone tells you you're full. Probiotics also help release this thing. And this is why in some studies, people that use really high quality probiotics end up eating less without really even trying. They also have, there's another study that shows that probiotics may increase the, the level of a particular protein called, called angiopoietin, like four, which leads to decreased fat storage. This is like this peptide, this protein, when it's released, tells the body, we don't need, we don't need to store as much body fat. So it slows that process down. This is all from probiotics. See, that's interesting. I had such like a simplistic uh, visual of that in terms of it being like, I'm repopulating my gut with like beneficial bacteria and that's sort of out competing, you know, the other bacteria that was creating the cravings and all that kind of stuff uh, versus, you know, what you're saying is like, so yes. you actually have the GLP-1 uh, hormone. hormone. Yeah. Well, and, and probiotics also have been shown to help with uh, muscle building. Uh, so, you know, this, if, in, you know, the problem is nowadays when they do studies on gut micro, uh, microbiota, it's now more common to not have a really well-populated gut it's starting to become a problem. Uh, maybe antibiotics, uh, plays a big role. Um, oh, sure. But, uh, probiotics show kind of this broad range of health benefits. The ones that were more established are like, you know, better skin, of course, better digestion, antidepressant effects uh, in some people, anti-anxiety effects in other people. Um, and now they're showing fat loss and muscle gain. Now it's not like a huge effect, but it's an effect. Yeah. It's an effect from something that improves your health. Well, to Justin's simplistic uh, kind of way of looking at it, I've always looked at it in a simplistic way too, but in a different way, which is just that it just makes logical sense that we have all these systems in our body. They all work synergistically. Yes. They all work with each other. And if one of them is really off or unhealthy and struggling, it only makes sense that 
the other systems would be struggling a little bit too. It's like an engine in a car. Yeah, downstream with, effect. Yeah, with the timing belt off. Like the, that car is not running its best. Doesn't mean it can't possibly go if the timing's off. So I mean, if it had one flat tire, it doesn't mean it necessarily won't go, but it's going to run so much better with those things optimized. And so it just makes logical sense to me that my metabolism is going to work better if my gut is healthy, yeah. just like if my brain is healthy, just like if my so muscles- I thought it was course. inflammation. So ever since we started working with seed, um, I've, I, I'm very consistent with seed. I take it every single night, like they say, at night, empty stomach uh, before bed. And I'm very consistent. But there are times when we travel and I forget it or whatever. And I'll notice I'm a little more kind of stiff. And especially if I work out, I'll notice like uh, maybe a little more sore than normal. I thought it was inflammation. I thought it was, oh, my inflammation is going up. It may be that I'm literally not repairing like hmm. I normally would uh, because my microbiome wasn't as good. Interesting. And that's ever since uh, I've noticed with seeds. So it's definitely an effect, which is pretty cool. I, it, was, it was cool to find studies actually support fat loss and muscle building uh, from something like well, that. Well, speaking of gut, uh, I saw something online. I want Doug to pull it up. There's a new AI tool. This is related to your stool. That's why I think it's a good transition. To whose stool? <laughs> to, to, it's called, uh, I think it's called AI Throne. And so, oh, come on, yes, dude. Let me guess you poop in and it analyzes your poop. Yes, so. a kind of cool. No, oh yeah, okay. Listen, let me I don't, look. Just let me so explain. I'm gonna have some fun with it. Let me explain why I think. Yeah, you would. Who, who makes this company? <laughs> Is it China? <laughs> <laughs> They're not getting my. Information. We're not gonna get any of the data. <laughs> you heard about the ancestry.com and all these like yeah, DNA dude. Uh, gathering businesses. Hey, like, yeah. What happened to that? Yeah. Hey, so. Listen, there's gonna be some cloning. I, when, you, when, you got, hey, when you guys think back, uh, uh, like your journey in health and fitness, both as a trainer and just as yeah. like a fitness person, uh, one of the things that I remember being like, uh, like a kind of an aha, or better yet, a duh moment, yeah. I feel uh, like, yeah. was actually really paying attention to my, my stool. Yeah. Dude. Like for the longest time as a young teenage kid or even early 20s, it's just like, oh, I thought- It told you nothing. Yeah, gonna, I thought it was just, that was just part of life. It's like yeah. some days you got good days, some days you got bad days. Have you guys ever watched the show Scrubs? No. I, I really hope that. the editors find this. There's this song. It's like, it's in your poop. Yeah. It's in your poop. You can yeah. find like literally everything that's going on in your body. You can... That's why I don't want to do this because does this company send my poop data somewhere? Who buys that? I don't know. But look, well, it, that you did, yeah. It looks pretty sophisticated, right, Doug? It does. Actually, there's an app that goes with it. You just hook this thing on the side of oh, your toilet. I got some uh, bad yeah. There's a camera that. that faces down towards the water. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you can put your food too, right? So it probably helps you get close. Like if you're if you're putting your food in, plus what you're, what's going on with your stool, it probably you gives you good insight. Afterwards. I would imagine it. it would start to connect the dots for a lot of people who are absolutely clueless about how you certain know, foods are affecting their digestion. You know presidents, when they go to other places, other countries. Yeah, they, they bag their poop. Yes, they won't let them poop. Yeah. And then they have to, they take the poop back. You know that, right? Wait, 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 say what? Because they could find Hold on. what okay. you didn't know this. Yeah. Wait, wait, when presidents go to other countries, yes. they it, poop in a bag. They, they yeah. If they it? go to another country and they poop, the, the Secret Service, Secret takes Service their poop. grabs the poop. No, and, they don't. Yes, they do. Hundred percent. Fact. No, they don't. Look it up. Yeah. Fact check Look these it up. guys. Yeah. This is, stop spreading stupid rumors. No, it's just <laughs> yes, true. There, there, there is a Secret Service guy that get, carries yes, a plastic yeah. bag around yes. of Trump. I don't and, know about the plastic bag. Biden shit. But, Real shit job. But they take they they don't let the poop stay there because of the. Shit. How do you get that? That that has to be like the lowest know. guy in the totem pole. Like, it has to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, you yeah. fucked up, Steve. You drew yeah. the short stick today. <laughs> Come on, like, honey. Timmy's looks on like the face. On, yeah, you're on Biden's. Poop Timmy's detail. on the FaceTime. Hey, oh, hey, Timmy. Did you get the job? Oh my God, he's in the Secret Service. Well, what do you do? They're happy what? with Biden. They just changed his diapers. Come on. This I swear they'll come capture on. It. It's not because, real. yeah because you could get DNA from it. You could get all kinds of information and potentially create a bio weapon, a target, a bio weapon, a clone. Who knows? There's, specifically from just the president's poop. Why? Why they do it for his? I don't know if they do it for any of the well, world yeah, leaders. The, that's the thing. They, yeah, they, they don't know what kind of medication you're on. Like, yes, if you have exactly. any kind of cancers. Like, that's the thing. There was rumors spread. I remember even like Putin. They're talking about like he potentially <laughs> might have some kind of cancer, and they were like yeah. spreading rumors about it. Did you find it, Doug? Yeah, I'm looking at this. Um, yeah, there's conspiracy. He's not how to Google conspiracy. Uh, yeah. He doesn't know how to Google. No, he doesn't. He's not well, a... you you Google it then. He's all. Let me get on Duck Duck Go real quick. <laughs> no, <he didn't>. <laughs> <laughs> Give you the real information. What did you type in the search? Let me see. Does the Secret Service? It's too long. Okay. Okay. <laughs> too long. Already, already too long. Yeah. That's uh, you can't. You got, do they capture? Capture the president's poop. President poop collection. 
Boom. <laughs> you said Putin. I've never <laughs> I have never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, dude. I've never heard I've of heard that. the same thing. Maybe we're just getting How totally is that? I mean, lied that's, to. Okay, so it is saying that when the president uses the bathroom outside the White House, not necessarily just in of foreign course. countries. Well, yeah. His feces are collected. Oh, Told anywhere. You. Told yeah. you. Wow. That's even crazier. So not even it's at a full-time exactly. job. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It's a full-time job. Yeah. Yep. So they, That's your job. <laughs> foreign agents can collect the, the feces and analyze it for drugs, medications, illnesses, things like that. Yep. So, yep. So it's not just when he travels abroad. It's like if anywhere. he shits outside the White House. Yes. <laughs> Wow. We got a presidential Who, poo situation. Dude, how come no one's ever talked you know about- that sucks. That's a, what a weird job. Thing. No, just even if you're the president, how embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, bro. You're getting- you know, I'm done. <laughs> we Sorry. gotta stop feeding them. I mean, how is there? How is there not some underground blog of like guys that have been doing this for years, being like talking about different presidents' like shit patterns? Like, <laughs> yeah, boy, you think there's, you're, be, there's a book out yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh no, man, you think you think his was bad? W. Let me tell you about him. His yeah. was bad for. Oh, this guy loved chili dogs. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah, when, he talked to, when he talked to the president of China over there, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> I don't know what they were serving him. Uh, yeah, wow. so that's real, dude. Yeah. Hey, Hey, speaking of like, but don't you? Okay, stop though. We, went, right. we guys went sideways on this. And I actually think this is actually really cool technology. What is it looking for? Oh yeah, how about that? What is it looking for? I mean, uh, let's see here. I got so many bad jokes I can't say on the podcast. Uh, Behavior yeah, changes at work. Yeah. I'm holding back. That's like trigger foods. I'm I'm trying to <laughs> get the details here for you. I mean, okay, you're inputting your food. It's tracking your stool. It's it's going to help it give you nutrient the- deficiency. Does it give you like? Um, it's going to connect the dots on things that you are eating consistently. And and how- okay, so uh, it does catalog each uh, bowel movement on the Bristol school's, uh, stool scale. Well, you can do that yourself. You can do yeah, that yourself, yeah. I, mean, I, I take pictures. Um, yeah, but nobody but does it. Come on, nobody, nobody does that, you know? You, yeah, so you, you, you use you, the app to track your food, medications, supplements, et cetera. Okay. Uh, so what this app does is connects the dots. See if your kid's taking drugs. Yeah, you know I mean? something. To <laughs> hey, we need to have a conversation. <laughs> we analyzed your poop. How did you find out? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't I, know. I think there's things that I thought myself It'll and a lot of clients were, did not same. bring awareness to till later on. And this is like a real easy indicator right away that something is off. And I can't tell yeah. you how many people. No. Don't no, have right. a normal stool. No, you're right. And think that's normal. My old studio. Like, that's your body trying to tell you something is not agreeing with you. My your- old studio. So many people in I my I used to have this like she, I I talk about her so many times because she taught me so much. She was like a functional medicine practitioner slash physical therapist. She asked me one day. She goes, Sal, can I put this on the bathroom door? And I looked at it, and it was a Bristol sco- yeah, stool scale picture. Yeah. And she put on the back, and I was like. <sighs> All right, let's put it there. Yeah, it's the bathroom. Why not? Yeah. So yeah. many conversations would have been so much awareness. Yes. Over that. That's it, what uh-huh. people don't check. They don't no. know. I mean, you know how I know that is I was a trainer and I still was like not yeah. really paying attention to that. It wasn't until later I really like had this aha moment of like, oh, wow, yeah. that's my body trying to let me know ahead okay. of time that I haven't. Speaking of tech, did you guys, have you guys been reading about Zuckerberg? All I saw recently was I saw like he wears, I saw he wears uh, luxury watches now. No. Oh. What? Yeah, you know, he was he's been known to be like super undercover. You know, this is like a new thing on, on him. He's like uh, oh, he's like flexion. He's had a glow up. Right? Yeah, he is just, that exactly yeah. that's a good way to say it. he's yeah. got like a he did like a Bezos move now. He he's kind of No, listen he's to trying he, to appeal more to uh Republican, I guess. So he's like yes. he's claiming that he's like full on libertarian. Yes. Like he he's now identifies saying, with it. He's now saying he's full on libertarian. And he's trying to repair his like, image with re- with Republicans. And of course, he commented on Trump and said he was badass. So Zuckerberg, who owns these huge um, social media companies, is that's now, like the kiss of death, right? For these, uh, I don't know. I mean, it used to be, is what I'm saying. But well, you see, the reason he got a lot of hate because they were the, one of the first ones to kick Trump off. Well, all the tech companies yeah. were like, no. I mean, I told you guys my theory on that. I don't think I never thought it was the the him. I yeah. think that mm-hmm. it was, that was because most of these dudes that did this all this open internet stuff were li- these are those are libertarian values. Yeah, yeah. I mean that they're built off of libertarian yes, values. So the thought that they were these like hardcore Democrats ne- never resonated with me when people tried to say that stuff. It was like more so maybe they have a bunch of young kids that are you know leaning more socialist and shit like that. That then they're influencing some of the things mm-hmm. that happened there at Meta. But I never once thought. He was like that. And this so, is good. I like, so libertarian ideals are nice if you are pro-freedom, pro-free speech, pro, uh, you know, or anti-censorship. 
then you want someone who's got libertarian ideas uh, because their ideas are, are really based off of like freedom, right? The, the old concepts of liberty uh, or, or classical liberalism is what they would call it. Yeah. So this is a good thing for people who believe that. If you believe in censorship and all that yeah, stuff, such bad a good, news. Such a good podcast. I've tr I was trying to find the name. I know his last name's Epstein, but it's not the Epstein you guys think. Mm. But uh, he he was like digging into all the data from Google specifically, uh, and it was very revealing in terms of how they sway yeah. that fourteen percent uh, voter. Yeah. It, it was, it, and, and then you look at like. Ever since, um, you know, Trump was elected and then to the, you know, even preceding that, like how they were able to like, you know, the, the search results and like what kind of information you receive was completely dependent on what they're putting out. Now, is that really when you guys think about this, right, and the history of newspapers and the people that yeah. own them and had control and power, this has kind of been happening in media forever. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. really not that no. alarming when you think about it. I guess. Because social media is so fast and we can we get it right in the palm of our hands so quick and everybody, yeah. I guess, is in, in integrated into it. I think it. it's just like it's the, really the, not, curtains, the curtains have been open. That's it. Yeah, it's yeah, always, it's been, always been there. It's, the yeah, curtains it's, it's open always now. been We're this more way. aware. Yeah. Yes, it's always been this yeah, way. We're, we're more so, aware now. I mean, you go back. 100%. Look, you, yeah. look, go back to, there's so many things we could point to. The Gulf of Tonkin yep. incident that yes. got the support to Real go to event. war with Vietnam. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. That was a fake event that they used. And we know this is all confirmed. So it's all been happening forever. I think now we're just more aware yeah. of this kind of stuff. I know. Yeah. Does that make it better or worse? I mean, is it like, should we? I feel like it makes it better, but I'm just more stressed out. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that is. Me, to me, that means it's not better. Bro. <laughs> it just kind of reminds you how much, you li how little you have control. I, you, know, it, yeah. it, you know, what it reminds me is like, so I never really understood the quote, uh, ignorance is bliss. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Until like, like, like Until now. Matrix. Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, that's I, the yeah. best uh, scene. That's such a great scene when yeah. he's like, just, I want to forget that I'm in the Matrix. Yeah. It, it's so much better. Better. Yeah, I know. It's, I know. When Neil wakes up and he's like, "Oh fuck, put me back to sleep." Yeah, I'm eating <laughs> this sucks. snotty whatever, dude. I can't believe I didn't bring this up when we were talking about the toilet. The poop. There's a there's a, a guy who made a supplement. This is real. I don't know if it works, but it's real. Okay, it's a fart pill. <laughs> uh, okay, Doug, look up. I'm gonna wow. I'm gonna give you the look this up. It's bringing uh, the knowledge today. Yeah, P I L U L E P E T. Okay, that and then fart pill. So apparently, P I L U P I L U L E P E T dot com. Huh. So apparently, this is a pill that you could take that makes your farts smell like roses. A pill? What? That's, that's kinda, what it says. That's kind of cool. That's what it says. That's I don't know if it's cool. real. That's kind of cool. No, another song comes to mind. With that's it. A <laughs> <laughs> I think the roses smell like poo, poo, poo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is this a real, is this like really weird? I mean, that's pretty brilliant if it is. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and how do you show that off? <laughs> I mean, hey, guys, babe. check this out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Well, that's great. Ooh, Good job. Yeah. Is it real? Come on, fact check this. It this seems is to be. Wow. I mean, I wonder if it's a joke, though. Is it real? Could it really be? Look at the guy yeah. selling it. He looks yeah. like someone that would sell we you a fart pill. We should yeah. test this out. If it works on Justin, yes. yeah, we're getting yeah, a sponsorship yeah. for yeah. sure, Adam. Yeah. Get a yeah. partnership. Or, or, hey, order, order a bottle, Doug. It's all it's yeah. mega yeah. strength. Okay. It's only 19 bucks. Sure. No, it's 19 pounds. Oh, no, euros. You gotta buy it from, from the it's from Europe. It's it smells like it roses. <laughs> that, I, I'm not believing this yeah. for a second. Yeah, dude, I gotta, I gotta order it and we'll let Justin test it. Dude, I gotta yeah. tell you, I gotta tell you guys. You know, you guys always make fun of me with mobility and this and that. You yes. know, I haven't injured myself since we've been here. I haven't had a serious injury. <laughs> it's, hey, you know why? Because flex? you only move in one place. Yeah, listen, <laughs> listen. Because you're never yeah, challenged. Yeah, yeah. Ask Al to turn around when you're walking behind. I'll just stay inside, you guys. Listen to me. Listen to me. What happened? I was in my house walking. Okay, stop, bro. <laughs> hey, hey, you get injured every day. Relax. I was, listen, I was, <laughs> listen, I was in my house uh -huh. and I came down. What's over the left? I came down the <laughs> stairs. That's just my lats are the way. Yeah. I came down the stairs and my feet slipped. Okay. Uh -oh, no, on the wooden dude. floor. Listen, I fell <clears throat> three times. Now, what I mean by that is I fell, I, Gathered I yourself. slipped. My feet went out. Now, my wife saw me. She's down the hall. So she saw me fall into the room. Now, she thought I was dead. She thought for sure. <laughs> she's like, you came off your feet. But my, I caught myself on my feet again. And then they slipped again because my socks were on. It was slippery. And then I caught them again. I caught them again. Three different times, explosive, save my ass movements. And then I stood up. Nothing. Not a wow. single in Nothing. Wow. I feel no pain whatsoever. <laughs> wow. So proud. 
that I that I. That's only because of your new walk with Jesus. That's the only reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's the only reason. <laughs> Wait, a, I, did, I did think about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The new Pumas. I thought, are hey, nice. while it was happening, uh, I was like in my head, I was like, I'm gonna get hurt. No, sure. <laughs> no, I'm going. I wish I had seen it. I guarantee it was like super slow motion. You yeah, know? like big dudes, like you know, it feels fast. Hey, she said she saw me like just because you know the walls right here. She saw me go. Oh, she's like, oh no. So we all we oh you don't oh you have stairs in your house too don't yeah. you so we all have stairs in our house yeah. right do you guys do things i do this do you guys do weird stuff like this where you when you walk up the stairs sometimes you'll like i'll 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 calf raise balance calf raise balance like i'll do stuff like that to I challenge skip at least one or two i'll challenge my stability like that i intentionally do no, that I because do that. i feel like that it's like one of those things uh, that if you you don't use it you lose it you know what i do i'll do the um i'll hop uh you know left to right like i'm doing uh ice skater kind of up, up the stairs yeah, yeah. Do I, really? I do yeah. that too i just did that like two i, I had to get up the stairs you real quick 12? it's pretty and effective sh 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 really you no i just don't want, bro i don't want to lose it sh 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 yeah. <laughs> That yeah. athlete, the, that story I tell, hey, that to, that story I tell about jumping out of the truck where my knees felt like they're going to explode, <laughs> woke me up, bro. That was enough for me. Yeah. Like it was like it was that was enough for me to realize, like, whoa. Hey, I almost fall <laughs> the lights again, bro. I, don't, I can't see the stairs. Oh, <laughs> catch what's going on here, dude? Uh, but hey, you know what? In case someone ever got to pick five hundred pounds off the ground, you got the, you got I, you yeah. got them. You I, can hey, help them out. Hey, seriously though, I was so literally, I swear to God, for an hour afterwards, I was waiting to see if I felt so like I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I can do it. I can do it. Dude. Maybe you're right. Maybe it was Jesus. Yeah, it didn't feel like Jesus, I was going down. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've like recently, I told you guys, like my youngest, he's like really into skateboarding now and stuff. And he's like <clears throat> trying to pull me into the, to the culture and like get me like doing stuff on a skateboard. And like, I'd narrowly, narrowly like avoided injury a oh. few times. And I'm like trying to do these like ollies. And, and then I'm starting to, my next move now is to try and do it while I'm moving. And uh, so you can ollie, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Now the skateboard doesn't break nothing, huh? It's just <laughs> well, steady. it's close. It's like, close. I, I told him like, I'm gonna have to get like, a big boy one. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to get a big boy skateboard because it's it's not it's like these reefs. Well, big. I mean, most skaters are not. You know, no, they're tiny, pounds. dude. They're, they're all tiny. little like skinny dudes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, oh wow! And you get off the air. You get in the air. That's great. I mean, not kind of. very high. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna claim that. more than me. He's like, I'm, I'm <laughs> this, all in the bottle this cap. This much is 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 all four wheels are off, dude. <laughs> can your son is he kick flipping yet? He is right. He's close. He's that's his. He's been working. He's, he can actually move? ollie over things. It's like the first big move. Yeah. Well, yeah. Once you can kick flip, apparently well, that's like a big learning curve, and then you got everything else comes off. That's like the definitive moment. Yeah. Wow. Good. For him, dude. Yeah, he's, I had a, he's I had a buddy. I, so I went to high school. Obviously, our era is when skaters got really big, and I had a buddy who I grew up with who became a skater, and he would practice every day for hours, 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 every single day, and eventually got good. But it takes a lot, dude. It's so much of a skill. Like it's 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 kind of ridiculous. Like I'm not gonna get anywhere. Is he wearing skate shoes yet with the fat tongue and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's well, he's not like he hasn't got fully like. He he just stopped wearing all the pads and stuff now because you know he goes to the skate park. And nobody wears pads. Nobody even wears helmets. You know, That's and I'm awesome. just like, it's it's old school. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so he at least still wears a helmet because I'm like, yeah. Like you, you're not quite like proficient yet. Did so you guys ever watch those old skate videos? They would be on like VHS or DVD, and these are like some of the first like mm -hmm. yeah reality. Yeah, yeah. Did you guys watch yeah, those? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, I used to watch that. I was at, I was into rollerblading. Bones so Brigade. I, I was like, dude. <laughs> rollerblading. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was. There was a time when it was actually somewhat. You got cool. the hips for it, dude. <laughs> no, you used to take out. You used to take out your two middle wheels and you'd put grind plates in the and then you use that and you would you would grind. Oh, and you do yeah, the rail yeah, slide. Yeah, 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 yeah all oh. that stuff. So I used to carry all our I wax around. Go, huh? You <laughs> <laughs> I a little scooter. Hey, speaking of injury, that reminds me. I wanted to ask you. Uh, I, I'm always, you know, you know how I explain science sometimes. You know, yeah. not very well. It's not real. Yes, yeah, <laughs> make yeah. up my own stuff. You know what I'm saying? I get the point across. That's the mm. important part. You know what I mean? Uh, trying to explain uh, what the Juve Light is doing for me, recovery wise. Yeah. Uh, both injury or recovering from soreness. Now I understand that it's like supercharging the mitochondria. Um, is there a a way to explain that? How how what it's doing for an injury different than any other like yes. skin benefits and stuff like that? Like how would you communicate that? So to think somebody? of it this way, right? So um, it's and it's different than this. So you know, everybody forgive What's me. My but, favorite word: photobiomodulation. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. 
Ah, really good. You. Every once in a while. No so, problem. okay. <laughs> oh, you just you just steal the mic all the time. <laughs> I got, I don't a, lot, I got a lot here, but I just pulled back. It's actually brilliant. <laughs> Listen, stop. I'm feeding him little studies. Uh, <laughs> I, I, like you see a plant, right? And a plant uh, takes sunlight and turns it into food, energy. Your mitochondria does that with certain, not that, right? But something like that with certain wavelengths of light. Red light, certain types of red light literally feed the mitochondria. It produces, it gives it energy. And mitochondria, if the mitochondria have more energy and they're healthier, whatever cell they're in, operates better okay uh, recovers faster grows better whatever yeah. so all the the muscle cells that have mitochondria or skin cells that have mitochondria right you shine red light on it all those cells now work much better because their engines the mitochondria are more energized so, th so that, that's what's happening that's good so that's a good way to because that also easily explains why it's good for hair growing your hair back why yes. it's good for your skin yes why it's yeah. anything that has mitochondria cell, yeah if which is every cell yeah, every healing, cell. A, healing a cut heal, like anything if you're trying to heal it's an injury like or a cut it's going to do it that. raises testosterone when you shine it on your lighting cells and your in your testes and they've shown this where the, well the, and this sounds funny when i first heard this i thought this was complete baloney well, there's we no first way saw ben greenfield on his treadmill like yeah. with it just yeah, yeah. do you know you guys know how i used it recently that like i've i haven't really tested it that much this way um i've typically have used it in the past like more so for like healthier skin and my psoriasis mm -hmm. and stuff um but right now because i'm doing this whole the whole series and i'm tracking everything and I've, I've i like always when you first start and come back you overreach and so um i really the first time i squatted i really overreached on the squats and I did this thing, you know, our panel is about, I don't know, that tall. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. I, I got down like on kneeling on it and I was just like coming up like almost like a, like a half, what do you call it? A hip hinge from your knee or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Right. Just to like, kind of like slowly pump blood into it mm. in front of the red light. Oh, I'd swear to God the next day, Why not? like the leap of recovery oh, that's yeah. like that. I, cause I know, you know, Ooh, when you trigger sessions in front of the red yes. light. Yes. Yeah. So basically it was what I was doing. It's basically creating a little trigger mobility session in front of the red light to help facilitate and speed up Great recovery. Idea. And, yeah. and yeah. okay. Again, I can't, it's hard for me to like show the right. data on what the difference of how long, but you know, you know when you get sore. Like we've been doing this long enough. Like okay, that I'm really sore. I'm gonna yeah, take like two or three. Active recovery. Yeah, or... I, it felt like it cut it in half. Like what would normally have taken me double the time Listen, to it recover. Works. For people who don't believe this, look up the study. And by the way, there's studies that go back as far as 1972. Uh, so this is not like a new thing. It's established science. Um, in fact, they have some studies that show that it improves cognitive function and reduces symptoms of dementia. When people will use red lights up their nose and actually get to the brain, uh, the if, if we could get red light to the brain, unfortunately uh, we can't because of our skull. But if we could, it could potentially even be a treatment for doesn't it, Alzheimer's. Doesn't it feel like you know all the wacky, crazy things you heard like ultra famous celebrities had yeah. to their own access, like exclusive access, access like became democratized all of a sudden. Yeah. That's you exactly know? what happened. Yeah, it's like hyperbaric chambers, you know, all of a sudden somebody has one or yeah. like cold plunge or, you Have know. you ever talked to Tina about those stuff? Katrina's mom? Uh, you should bring that type of stuff up to her sometime because she was hanging out with some of these like old school like scientist that. dudes like in the fifties and sixties. And every time I tell her something, like yeah, no, they were They've talking been around about, forever. Yeah, You're she's like, like what? yeah, yeah. My my guy was talking about that well, sixty years, but they were so woo woo and so, weird, and everybody nobody. So the took panel them you were talking yeah. about, right? The panel you're talking about, and and it's not all red light. There's certain wavelengths that are yeah. that really do this, and so look, you want to look at the studies, and that's the wavelength you want. That's why we work with Juve because Juve works with. The, the exact same red light. Medical grade. It's the kind that is used in studies. Otherwise, you'd have to use the cheap stuff for like 10 times as long uh, to produce the same effects uh, that you would get from Juve. But the, the, speaking of the democratization, that panel uh, that you get from Juve would be like, I don't know how much it is, a couple thousand, three thousand dollars, something like that. That panel uh, just 15, 20 years ago was like 15 grand. Yeah, you know? I believe it. Yeah, way more. And yeah. you can only get access to it if you went to expensive salon yeah. and paid 100 bucks a session or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, so yeah. No. I know. I know. It's yeah, but, it's, it, but it's been around for a long time. Yep. A lot A lot of the things that we talk about today and we think is so like revolutionary, it's like it was around a long time ago. Mm. Just like many things, we didn't have uh, we didn't have the words, I guess, or the science to like prove yeah. like what, what yeah. exactly it was doing. But there was people They knew that, there was an effect, but it was like there was enough mm. studies really to... Verify Doug, it. can you look up Son of Concord? Do you remember, guys, remember the Concord plane that they, um, I've been meaning to bring this up with you, Justin, because I think this is something oh, you think is cool. Okay. Remember the Concord that they retired? 
It was like the fastest uh, passenger plane. Okay. It was remember the one with vaguely, like, yeah. It was like pointy and it, uh-huh. it could get you from here to Paris in X amount of hours, yeah, like way faster. So I think they're coming out with another one. And, yeah, and, and it's gonna be even faster. Like the, mock. Uh, it's supersonic. Oh, supersonic. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Super. I, I heard they were working on a supersonic a, jet to to be able to get you to like Europe. Real. It'll fly 925 miles an hour, one and a half times the oh speed of sound. Um, can you look up, Doug, the son of Concord, uh, New York to Paris or something like that? I was looking up some stats and it's like crazy, um, crazy Dude, speed. Yeah. Why don't we like, come on, like how awesome and convenient would that be? Where do we, like, where do we, where do we, New back? York to London in three and a half hours. That's wow. So sick. Holy shit. Which smokes. is like, what is that? Half? How much is a traditional New York to London? Yeah. New York to London. What's a traditional flight? 10 uh, hours. Is it 10 hours yeah. from New York? Cause New York's already all the way over there. No, I, would, I think it's like uh, six or seven hours. Do, I don't know. Check that. That's it's probably yeah, close to ten, bro. Yeah, some of them have gone as fast as two or th- you know two to three hours. Hmm. Yeah, let's look at the commercial. Yeah, jet. There you go. Let's see what that says. Seven hours, almost seven, eight hours. Bro, so half, yeah, less yeah, than half. Yeah, that's crazy. You know why they they retired it? So the cost, um, the tickets were so expensive, and people just weren't weren't getting them. Hmm. But I would. How do fast it. are we going to get? Well, I mean, there's certain. At what point do we go back in time? <laughs> Superman dealt with that. I mean, dude. we're going faster than the speed of sound. Yeah. Well, when we go faster than the speed of light, how much farther are we have to go? Yeah, <laughs> quite a bit. Well, <laughs> like you, you just laugh and say that. I bet you when we were doing 50 miles an hour, it was like, yeah, right, we'll go faster than the speed of sound. No Did way. Did you know that they thought, scientists thought that if you went faster, I remember what it was. Someone was making a train, some of the first like speed records. And they said, if you go That's faster. That's the speed of light right there. Yes. That's yeah. pretty fast. Plus, pretty fast. Plus, the problem is you have mass. You see, if the faster you go, the more mass you build. So literally, if you did that, you create a black hole. You wouldn't be able to. That's why light That's when we go back in time, right? No. <laughs> Your science is... You go, where do, I don't know. Well, where do I, yeah, where do I go? Yeah, where do we go? Right. <laughs> yeah, where do we go? <laughs> have, have you ever seen the examples of like, if you had a twin that traveled at the speed of light for 15 years and then came back... They would have aged like two days while you're, you know, ten years older. Have you ever yeah, seen that? I've seen the, stuff? I've seen the, um, so weird. The travel, just traveling out in space type of deal, and come yeah. back that it, it changes that. It doesn't even have to be that crazy. Dude, they actually have to change the clocks on the on satellites because they travel so fast around the Earth. They have to change them, otherwise they won't sync up uh, with our clocks down here. Okay. And the and the and the clocks on, like the top of the tallest mountains are slightly, I don't know, slower I think than the ones down at sea level. It's, I mean, it's imperce- It's almost imperceptible, but they can measure it. It's so cool. I know, it's so weird. Yeah. It's such a weird, such a weird thing. That is crazy. Do we have a shout out? Uh, I thought you had one, Justin. Didn't you have something? Oh, I did the other day. Uh, and she used have- it already. What was the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not prepared. Uh, let's see here. Oh, you know, can we, can we shout ourselves out? What do you want to do? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love when we do that. <laughs> no, okay. So I, I'm going to set the table for this because. We didn't announce it before. Uh, Doug for, for, forgot to put it in the notes and tell us to say anything again this time. But going forward, bi-monthly, we are going to do a webinar for free. Oh. We just did one, and this is for coaches and trainers. Coaches and trainers. We are teaching you how to be a better coach and trainer, how to make more money, be more successful. It's, it's all free. It's free. It's completely free. Yeah, and we're going to continually do these webinars. Adam and I are teaching Yeah, us. we're getting feedback. We just did another one last we night. We just did one titled, How to Make Six Figures Consistently as a Trainer or Coach. That was the one we just did. And the feedback's been great. So, uh, yeah, it's totally free to do that. We will be posting that So on the Facebook page, uh, which is uh, called what, Doug? Uh, success. Se- uh, what is it? Trainers. Grow success. Secrets. Gross. Yes. Let me Trainer Grow Secrets. Yeah. <laughs> we should know our own Facebook yeah, group. Yeah. 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 Uh, let me get this. I think it's Trainer Growth Secrets. Yeah, it's Trainer Growth Secrets on Facebook. And then on Instagram, it's the Mind Pump Trainers. So on there, you'll see the announcements. Hopefully, we remember to put this in our show notes going forward that as we get the dates for all the webinars, we'll tell you right where to go and sign up for it. So, um, but this is me prepping the audience. So if you don't hear us, make sure you bug Personal us. Trainer Growth Secrets. There you go. Personal Trainer Growth Secrets on Facebook. We'll always announce the web- webinar on there. So it'll be easy to find. So the best thing is to just go follow that page and you'll always see the annou- announcements on there or going to the Mind Pump Trainer IG page. You'll also see it on there. Cold water therapy helps regulate your hormones. It produces those feel-good chemicals that give you energy, reduces inflammation. You can actually substitute it with your pre-workout or for your pre-workout. Do a little cold plunge before your workout. Watch what happens. Anyway, there's a company called Plunge 
that makes them for your home. It filters the water, keeps it cold. It's nice and clean. You don't need to add ice. You don't need to you know refill it every single time. It's great. Go check them out. Go to plunge.com uh, and then use the code MINDPUMP. Get $150 off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Dion from Australia. Dion, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, Good guys. Hey, I'm interested to know what your thoughts are on oscillation training, um, when to use, what would programming look like, and have any of you incorporated it, it into your training? You now, to tell, uh, me, tell me what that is, Sal. So, you know? so it looks like, it almost looks like partial wraps. And what you're trying to do is, is in, in some cases, train the stretch reflex. So it would be like at the bottom of a squat and you come up a little bit and come back down, come up a little bit, come uh, back down. Oh, like a pulse squat? Yeah. Yes. It's like yes. pulsing, yes. yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. And you can do it in the mid-range as well. Now, uh, Dion, is this, are you an athlete? Is yeah. this for you? Or how you would trainer? you define it too? Yeah, yeah. Well, I do a bit of running as well and my son does sprint training. So it sort of started coming up in my feet. So I was wondering, yeah, get the diesel on it. What's the, what's the deal? I would, you know, oscillation training, I would place under plyometrics uh, in terms of value. Um, I don't, I almost also, never. Also, also, I, I want to know what, like, what is your, like, what are you training for? Like, what's your desired outcome? That's kind of important here too, because there's like, there's so many different ways that we can manipulate like your, mm -hmm. your training and based off of what your goal is, what you want to get out of your training might be whether I, cause I mean, maybe doing cluster sets are better for you because you care more about hypertrophy. Like what's the, what's the goal for you? What do you want to achieve? Well, hypertrophy would probably be main goal, okay, but so. also, yeah, I do run as well. So yeah. So sprinting and stuff like that. If your main goal is hypertrophy, full range of motion is, is yeah. where you're going to spend 99, yeah, 99% of your training. And this is why I made that, I yeah. made that point be like, yeah. I don't know if you, have you ever done cluster sets before? No. Okay, cluster sets no, are awesome. What's that? It's it's like yeah. where you uh who did we do the episode with where we got into cluster sets? What was his name? You, Stevenson? Was it Stevenson we got into? Uh, I think that might be It was. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, I have to look him up. Yeah, maybe Doug can look it up where we get into good detail on explaining <sighs> what that what that looks like, but that was why I wanted to ask that. It's like something like this where you're kind of pulsing or doing tempo stuff. Uh, maybe not it's not that it's not a bad it's not a bad thing i'll tell you that right now and it's, it's another thing that you can do to vary it's a novel your stimulus yeah it's a novel sure. stimulus that's the word i was looking for thank you justin uh -huh. but if you're going to do something novel and hypertrophy is your main goal i like things like cluster sets or something like that that would be a great novel stimulus but again it would represent one to you know five yes, percent yes yes full range of motion for hypertrophy overall muscle development is king by far, all these other variations, especially when you look at athletic training, is very specific to the kind of adaptation you're looking for um, from in an athletic um, perspective, right? So, plyometrics really great for explosive power, being able to generate force for a period of time. Um, but does it cause hypertrophy like full range of motion traditional training? No, it doesn't. Um, you know, uh, pause, squats, uh, oscillation training. There's some value maybe for strength athletes in some cases, like a power lifter might take advantage of oscillation training, although a pause squat would be better to develop strength in a particular range of motion. Yeah. Um, but if your goal is, is, is just overall muscle development, um, this is something I wouldn't spend really much time in. Yeah, I mean, even isometrics and just holding those like difficult positions of the rep is going to have like a tremendous impact on your strength for – uh, you know, end range strength, especially too, if that's, you know, something you're interested in, but uh, it's still a novel stimulus. You want to like incorporate it for maybe a few weeks uh, as, as something to, uh, you know, uh, change up the, the, um, you know, the, the stimulus. So your body kind of responds to it a bit more, but like in terms of the overall foundational programming, it's going to be very much driven by, you know, your, your basic compound lifts. So it was, it was Scott Stevenson. We did an episode with him. Great episode. He's also, his, uh, Instagram handle is fortitude training. Yeah, fortitude underscore training. So fortitude underscore training. He's like a big proponent of of cluster sets. I love cluster sets. I think if you've never messed with that, it's a fun thing to incorporate into your training. It's still to Sal's point and Justin's point. It's a novel stimulus. It's something that you do for a little one and then move out of it. It's not a way of training going forward. But I love cluster sets because you incorporate full range of motion in these kind of partial type rep uh, reps. 
So you'll see it's it's interesting how how it works uh, and the and the tempo and then also the uh, rest periods are unique. So check that out on his on his page or listen to that episode. And if you want to do something and, and hypertrophy is your goal. I think that's one of my favorite little novel stimuluses yeah, to, to mess for my person. Now, as far as program is concerned, you don't. Uh, um, I'll just tell you the mistake everybody makes with with these variations of training. Getting is they, stuck in them. They, well, not just, but I mean, besides, even bigger than that is they add it to their current program. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if your traditional workout calls for, I don't know, just five sets of squats, let's say, then what people will do is, oh my God, I want to try oscillation training. So they'll do their five sets of squats and then they'll add three sets of oscillation. Don't do that. If you're going to use any new novel stimulus, you replace. Otherwise, you're going to overdo it. Um, so okay. it would be instead of five sets of squats, it would be two sets with three sets of oscillation. Or do you have any of our programs, Dion? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. I've got performance, anabolic, okay, and symmetry. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, so Great. yeah, check out check out the sh Scott Stevenson I'm talking about, and then if you want to play around with some of these novel stimulus, like just like Sal said. Like let's say it's bicep curl day, and, and where we have you know preacher curls or whatever in there, pull those out and then do the variation of the uh, of the um, bicep curls with cluster sets. So that's how you would do it. Yeah, fantastic! Yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah, yeah, you got it, man. All right, all right, Dion. Thanks for calling. Thanks, in. guys. Thanks, guys. What time is it in Australia? I know. I was wondering. Poor he guy must woke up be tired. <laughs> you know. Um, so do you guys remember the body blade? Yeah. Remember that yeah, piece yeah. of crap? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, what they did. Yeah, that and the shake weight. Yeah, so they, they both of those. Yeah. Both of those are trying to utilize the effects of oscillation training, although it's terrible. Well, yeah, because it's partial rep, and yeah. then you're just trying to maintain that, like, tension momentum. Yeah, although they're both terrible they're, replacements for it's, that. Yeah, it's kind of now, it, silly. The thing that I think is important because every the only way something like that actually gets the traction is there's some sort of science to support there is was. And so that's what sure. people and that's where the people that will argue that it's great is that it's like, oh, I did it. I got these results. Listen, it's a novel stimulus. Mm -hmm. If you've never, yeah. you know, shaken a blade like this or, you know, a dumbbell, <laughs> you know, like if you've never done that, like in the first like imagine with the, where I'm coming from right now, right? I haven't like right now, this is the kind of the point that I've made in this docu-series is like any stimulus is novel right now because my body's been reset. It's adapted to doing nothing. So let's say I grabbed the shake weight and I started for the first three weeks of doing shake weight stuff. I'd see You'll results. Something. I'll see results. Now it wouldn't be the Dude, most. We, we boxing, you know. You're yes. See a little bit of something. So right? people need to understand that. And then I think, and uh, you know, I love questions like this because then somebody who doesn't listen to us, they go and do it and they get, it, they see some results and then they're like, fuck, those guys are wrong. Yeah. And then they stay in it <laughs> yeah. and then they stay doing that forever because yeah. they saw results in it, not realizing, well, of course, buddy, it was a novel stimulus, but that, that goes. Now, I, I do want to say, you know, okay. So one of the applications of this is really strengthening that stretch reflex, right? Mm -hmm. That, that, you know, like if you lower a squat and come back up, you're going to be stronger than if you start at the bottom of a squat. I think everybody who works out knows what that feels like. If you were to get under a bar at the bottom and try to lift it, you're not going to be as strong as if you start at the top, lower it, and then come back up. Yep. But I, you know, when I was really trying to get my squat up or other lifts up, I tried some of this. I did better with the pause. I just got better results. Instead of oscillating at that bottom position, I would go down, pause, and hold, and then come back up. I can see oscillation training potential for a power or explosive type lifts, yeah. maybe, especially like a like an Olympic lifter. When they squat, if you ever watch an Olympic lifter squat, they don't squat like a power lifter. Power lifter goes down real tight and slow and comes well, back well, up. Well, it reminds me of like a power lifter, how they'll like pull from the rack or, you know, they'll, they'll take like, sure. uh, they'll segment it out. So you have like different compartments of the lift uh, to focus on. Right. And so you can like kind of isolate, like oscillate, I should say, like different portions of that range of motion. Uh, you know, for power. So I can see how that might translate. So that, that's not where my brain went when I asked this, like where I was thinking and why I asked him what, what his desired outcome was. And when he went hypertrophy, I just yeah, right, right away moved away from it because I would see places, good application for this, where uh, you have like a sport where you would actually do something. Example, like a volleyball player sits in that kind of squatted position. It's kind of pulsing in that. Very obvious. Yeah. So, so, and then it has to explode up and jump or explode to the right yeah. or left. So, okay, you're training something that translates yeah. 
uh, over to uh, yeah, his goal wasn't that. Yeah, right? yeah. So, yeah, and so right, if he yeah. said something to me like, "Oh, I'm a volleyball player," yeah. and spiking at the net, I was like, "Oh, okay, that that makes sense to be down in this kind of pulsing situation." And the and I'm, I don't you can't think of other sports, but there's other sports where you're kind of I mean even basketball, right? Where you're down in that kind of defensive position, and then you got to jump up and block a shot or something. That makes kind of sense yeah. to me to train that because it'll translate over into the court uh, or the field. But oh, yeah. if your goal is a like linebacker stance, you're a runner that. and you want to build muscle. It's like, well, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of tools in the toolbox that I'm probably going to pull out before I pulled this one out. Our next caller is Doug from Minnesota. Doug, what's up, man? What up, Doug? Doug. Doug. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, oh, we're good, dude. What's happening? So, uh. First off, like everybody, you know, thank you for everything you guys do. Um, a healthy America is a better America. And uh, I'd like to thank you guys for doing your part and making that happen. Um, and then also shout out to my fellow Doug in the back. You're making, hey. you're making the name proud. There's not many of us around there. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening? So, uh, it up. A, a quick uh, TLDR before about me before I get into my question. Um, 34 years old, father of four, 6'2", 200 pounds, right around 14% body fat. I uh, work out two to three times a week, uh, currently running MAPS Performance, uh, which I didn't think I'd like based on looking at the exercises, but actually I really enjoy it. So kudos to you guys on that. Um, I uh, own a dairy farm for work, and so a very active job, seven days a week, um, probably probably average, or I know I average about 25,000 steps a day. Um, with that, I need about 4,000 calories to stay at maintenance. And I have to be at maintenance, like work out a side, it don't even matter if I don't hit that calorie mark, I just can't function properly, or to what I feel like would be the best of my ability for my business. Um, and as you guys know, the business is more important than working out when you're self-employed. Um, <laughs> But with my business, I'm basically, I got a lot of benefits, um, basically my own personal butcher box. I got unlimited access to homegrown beef. Uh, I raise my own meat birds. I have egg layers. I got access to homegrown pork and fish That's awesome. and all that stuff. And then yeah. obviously with the dairy side, um, luckily I'm not like Sal. I can have unlimited access to raw milk and uh, my wife takes awesome. that and turns turns it into homemade Greek yogurt and all that stuff. So I don't have an issue like many people getting that one to one ratio of protein to body weight. Um, in fact, I'm significantly over that with my diet. I probably am close to three, three twenty five instead of that two hundred, which is obviously good. But being that I want to be at maintenance, I don't want to gain any more weight. Um, I've had a lot of injuries between farming and playing college football. I really feel good at this 200 pound set. Um, this Goldilocks phase that you guys talk about, it's true. It works. I've slowly just melted away fat, got leaner in certain areas, wider in certain areas while staying at that 200 mark. Um, but does eating that excess calorie or excess grams of protein, does that speed up that Goldilocks process at all? Or does it not really matter because I'm not eating excess calories to help promote excess muscle gain um, in a bulk phase? What a great yeah, question. That is a cool question. First of all, you're probably strong as hell. Uh, mm. Dairy, <laughs> farmer, yeah, farmer, mm. eating all that. You know, with protein, we go one-to-one, -one and that's a great target for most people. Is there evidence that going higher than that in certain individuals, especially active individuals, is there evidence that there may be some benefit? Some, not a lot, but some. Uh, do we need to worry about eating that much protein? No, no, you're not gonna you're not gonna do yourself any harm. Um, if you're in a deficit, high protein becomes really important. Right. So if you're in a calorie deficit and you ate over one to one ratio, you're gonna be better off. Way better off doing it that way. Uh, <laughs> your protein requirements go up or at least in terms of preserving muscle, go up as your calories uh, go down. As your calories go up, it's not quite as important. Uh, carbohydrates and fats can become protein sparing when the calories start to get high. Um, but I think you're I think you're doing great. Unless you have any digestive issues or you don't feel good, then in which case I'd say, let's look at what you're eating, maybe change your macros. 
But if you're feeling good, you find yourself getting leaner while getting stronger and building muscle, like you're killing it. And then the access, the food access you have is incredible. It's all homegrown stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're in a great, yeah, yeah you're in a great situation. So. I mean, honestly, uh, I would, if you were a client and you gave me all this, this, this uh, data I w and you're telling me what you just said, I would be like our main focus. Cause I think you're in such a good sweet spot. would be like always trying to maximize your energy. Cause it sounds like that's yeah. like, I might be playing with what time you have carbs, what type of carbs you have like paired with it. Cause your protein's perfect. Sounds like you're right around the calories you need to be. And it does obviously sound like, you know, energy is important to you because you have a very physical job that's demanding. And so if there's anything I'm messing with with you, it would be like what types of foods and carbs and at what time of day like I have, like, and see if I can get get you more more energy for what you need to do. And then, but as far as the protein and where you're at calorie-wise, it sounds like you're in a really good place. Yeah. How's your digestion? Do you have any digestive issues with that? Or are you? Oh, uh, no, no. I have uh, grew up on raw milk and all that stuff. So luckily I could, I drink probably, uh, a little over a half a gallon a day of milk. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I know yeah. you couldn't handle. I know you couldn't handle that. Stuff. I wish. I so wish. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe now your your stomach's getting better. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you got. I mean, you probably have a really healthy microbiome growing up on a farm, and you, you know. So, but that would be the, my only question. Not because it, not because it would cause digestive issues, but because everything's going so well, that would just be the next question I would ask you. Is I would say, okay, well, let's go down the list, and the next thing I would ask would be digestion. But uh, if I figured it was good. Um, the next question would be fiber. Are you eating enough vegetables and fiber? My wife forces me. She uh, yeah. homegrown garden, all you know, <laughs> raises all all her own vegetables. So yeah, no, no, I dude. didn't eat any. Uh, <laughs> didn't eat any vegetables before her, and uh, luckily I you, found her. You're and, in a you good know, spot, bro. Solve that. You're yeah. in, you're in yeah, a good, no, I, you're in a good spot. I'm, I'm I'm happy with what I'm at, and I was just wondering because like my dream physique, if you know, if that was the Goal, like would be a poor man's uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and Roadhouse. <laughs> you know, I don't need to be that. I don't need to be that six, seven percent body fat. But you know, I'd like to get down to about ten. And like, I wrote this question, God, back in like April or something. And back then, I was like sixteen, seventeen percent body fat and two hundred pounds. So I've been doing like, like you guys say, like it works. Like I've been. Right at this two hundred pound, minute. you know, maybe up and. Let me get this clear, Doug. You were at you were at sixteen, seventeen percent, two hundred pounds. Now you're at fourteen percent, two hundred pounds. In since in the last about five months, yeah. Stay, bro. Stay the course. Yeah, yeah. I know. You're, you're in such a perfect spot. You're, you're, you're gonna get your problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I was I was planning on it. I was just wondering. I mean, I just you know, I I, I have everything dialed in pretty good. I just didn't know. No, if change by, nothing. Yeah, by yeah. doing extra protein, if that would. You know, I mean, I know it's kind of a nuanced question. Change, not, no, it changed nothing. To get that. It's a really good question. In yeah. fact, we have an episode with Angelo from Keon coming up where we kind of get into like when you're in a potential. And there's probably days, whether you realize it or not, where you're you hit maintenance and other days you're a little bit lower. Other days you're a little bit higher. I mean, you're doing really good of hovering right on there. And when you're in these days, whether you know it or not, where you're probably a little under maintenance and you're eating this high of protein, like it's that protective. is, the, that is the best thing you could yeah. possibly do. I, look, and that is absolutely keeping your results moving as fast as they are because you, you're not parent. When you're in that little bit of a deficit, we don't, we, I know you're not sacrificing Doug, muscle. Doug, I, I'm, I'm, very confident with what I'm about to say, but the mistake that you could potentially make is changing anything. I wouldn't change anything. Okay. If you're, if you went down 2%, maintain your body weight, keep going. You'll probably hit a roadblock around 12 or 11%. That's usually when things start to get a little bit more granular. And then at that point you can maybe do a little calorie deficit if you want. I'm going to tell you right now, 10% body fat is overrated straight up, especially if you're physical especially if you're a physical individual and you got a long, you know, you got a, a physical job, you might get down to 10 or 9% and just find like, okay, I, I'm not, I'm not working as well as I did before. Um, and it really oh, is, yeah. it, it really is overrated for most people. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm happy. Like if this is all I got, you know, if I didn't lose any more fat, like I, I'm very happy with where I'm at, you know, we're all just a little selfish and want a little more. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, it, you know what though? Like also, if you're a client of mine, uh, we had, we had this discussion just recently. Like I, I would love to take you there so you could feel it for yourself too. There's nothing wrong with 
pushing the body forward. But what you will, you will see a, a decline in your performance at work. It's just a fact. If you start getting in a deficit for a long, long enough period of time and get below 10% yeah. body fat, I mean, yes, you're going to look crazy cool. But you'll also notice a difference. And then, you know, it, and maybe it's great for you to go there, kind of feel that and realize like, okay, this is cool. I said I did it. I said I wanted to do it. I did it. But I also realize now the other things in my life are suffering. And so I'm letting myself get and a little. I'm, I mean, straight up, like the difference between 12%, because you're going to probably get to 12%, Doug, changing nothing. I'm pretty confident. You'll just, you'll probably drop another couple percent. The difference between 12% and 10%, nobody could tell unless you take your shirt off and you're at the beach. But you're in Minnesota. How often do you go to the beach? Yeah. <laughs> I can't even swim, so never. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Nobody cares. Yeah, I mean, seriously. Yeah, and you're married, dude. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, are we yeah. talking you about? You got four yeah, kids. Exactly. You're married. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. good, bro. You're yeah, good. Yeah. You're doing. You're doing great. That's you are, great. Yeah, I'm you glad are. To hear this. You're doing. You're doing really good, bro. Can we send strong? You? It's yeah. So what good. program? Let's let it. Let us send you a program. What you just did? Uh, you just did performance. You, had you anabolic have anabolic. Before. What else you got? You got anything else? Yeah, I got. Um, well, what's the one app that you guys? Aesthetic. Aesthetic. I have aesthetic and split. Um, I'd like symmetry because okay, I've had a lot of injuries between um, football okay. and uh, okay. um, symmetry. I yeah, played college sure. football like with Harmon, and, and I, I think symmetry. From what I've heard, you guys talk about it. That would kind of help. Be, be a great program for you. Got you. It. Be a great program for you. Send us a gallon and, of milk. And, we'll send you. Yeah. Some <laughs> <of> you. <laughs> Here, here's a deal, Doug. And so, in case we don't talk I'll for a long it. time or whatever, you're you're set up so nicely. And you, now that you have symmetry and you have performance, you have such a good rotation of programs. Just always have at least one at one time out of the year run symmetry or performance and, and mix it up with the other ones, and you're, and, fine. And you're going to be great. It's going to keep you so balanced. Uh, take your keep your joints healthy. Taking through full range of motion, a lot of multi planar movements that you're going to get incorporated. As long as you run one of those programs, either symmetry mm -hmm. or performance, once a year, every year, while you while you mess with the other programs, you're you're going to see consistent good results. Stay healthy and strong. Perfect. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it and everything you guys do. All right, you got Doug, it, man. God on, bless dude. you. Keep farming. Love All it. Right, have a good one, guys. You take too. it easy, man. I had a, I had, ass, bro, listen, Kicking I had a, and I know you know this, Justin, cause you played football. You get these kids that grow up on farms and oh, they're, yeah. they're strong on another level. I had a client once who she grew up on a dairy farm, older woman, she was a surgeon yep. and she grew up in literally Minnesota. Actually, she had her niece come visit her. So this, this girl was in her early twenties and, and she comes in and I meet her and I'm like, you ever work? First of all, she shakes my hand. I can already tell yeah. from her hand strength. And I said, you ever work out before? She's like, nah, I just, I mean, that's what I do for work as I work out. So I'm like, okay. And I took her through a, her first strength training workout. She was so strong. It was comical. Yeah. The, the strongest people I've ever met we were from Nebraska <laughs> and Kansas. And it's like, and it, they just grew up on a farm and it's just like that constant, you know, frequency. And yeah. it's just exposure to that kind of hard work and they, they don't think anything of it. You know, so it's just like another uh, thing presented in front of them to, you know, to overcome the obstacle. And it's just like, it's just a natural thing. I, I also think that you have, I mean, there's, it's so true. There's like uh, farm strength and old man strength. They're both really, th real things. Yeah, yeah, it's they're real, real, they're real, real, they're real things. Yeah. And, and similar in a sense, right. Of this, this, this great CNS, right. This ability to fire these muscles. Like think about when you are on a farm and you're constantly picking and rotating things. Like you, you, you naturally start to act, you have to act. That's your foundation, your core. You activate that every time before you do that. So yeah. their their foundation is so solid that yep. it's so easy to build on them because they have totally, all those years. Totally, but you know he's in such a great spot. Great for anybody spot. watching or listening right now, like uh, the the mistake he could make, which is actually a common mistake, is you're humming along and you're doing great, and then you go, "I want uh -huh. to try and make this go faster." Yeah, that's when you make your mistake because right now he's moving such a he's nice just second guess himself. Speed, yes, like yeah. stay the course, stay the course, you'll be good. Hey, sorry to interrupt. It's October. MAPS Muscle Mommy is 50% off. Half off. If you're interested, click on the link below. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Brad from North Carolina. What's up, Brad? What's up, Brad? Hey, what's here? going on, guys? How are you? Good, Good, man. I'm all right, man. Awesome, man. Well, before I jump into it, of course, I just want to say thank you for the wisdom and content you guys put out. Uh, three years ago, I was 40 pounds fatter, rocking Queen Essentially, the dad bod, skinny fat, no muscle. And uh, turned 40 in a few months and healthier than I've ever been, stronger than I've ever been, and really grateful for you guys. Awesome, man. Awesome. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Love great. to hear it. How can we help you? 
Yeah, I got to say, too, as a pastor, I love the faith content. And uh, Sal, getting to watch your journey has been so rad, man. So keep it up. Oh, uh, thanks for saying that, man. I appreciate that a lot. Absolutely. We wore him so down, bro. We wore him down. <laughs> yeah, after, like, yeah. <laughs> Battle of attrition. That would have happened faster without you guys uh, breaking my balls all the time. I guess. I guess. That's funny. Just so to my question. Uh, my posterior chain is chronically tight. I lift full body four days, a, four times a week. I stretch and foam roll daily, but it seems like no matter what I do, it tightens back up rather quickly. My job as a pastor is pretty sedentary, but I make sure to hit my 10,000 steps a day, as well as try to get up and at least walk a few minutes every hour. When I do any posterior work, especially deadlifts, it's miserably tight for days afterwards. Could there be any sort of imbalance or other issues that may be causing this? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah, but explain yeah. what you mean by tightness. Where you said posterior yeah. chain, low back. That's every day. Yeah, low back. Where do you back? Where do you feel it? Is it painful or does it just feel sore? Or super uh, tight. Just yeah. Days. Yeah, not necessarily painful, just basically low back all the way to my calves, just like I feel oh. old, like I can barely <laughs> bend over. Okay, okay. okay. And, and this happens after deadlifting? Um, I would say it's pretty consistent, but it goes to a whole nother level a couple days after deadlifts. Okay, so there's two things that we could do. One is kind of a temporary help or solution. Show me his deadlift. And then, the other, yeah, let's watch his deadlift. Let you got this. a video of your deadlifting. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, look at yeah, his technique real quick. It's hard to see from that angle, but... That's not bad. No, no, it's definitely not no, bad. No, not bad deadlift form. Okay, so stat long static stretching is a nice temporary fix. So literally you get down, you stretch your hamstrings, hold the stretch for two or three minutes. You can do this post-workout, and then you can also do this uh, on the days off, uh, especially before bed. It's a great time to do it is before bed because it'll help us sleep. I think that's a good place to start. Uh, and what that'll do is it kind of tells the central nervous system it doesn't need to be so active. Now, if we got to look at the root though, right? What's the root cause? If you're excessively tight, it means that your body senses an instability somewhere. Yep. And the way that your body tries to create stability is by tightening you up. So literally the central nervous system is telling those muscles to stay partially flexed, for lack of a better term, to maintain stability. All right, where is that instability coming from? It's probably the hips. Yes. And it, it, most likely it's coming from your hips. You most likely have some issues with internal or external rotation or activation of the hips. Mm -hmm. Do you have MAPS? I live in the 90s, yes, brother. 90s yeah. all day. Do you have MAPS Prime Pro? I don't. Okay. We're going to send so that. Let's send that to you. And there's some hip mobility movements in there. And those movements, I would pick two of them, yeah. the ones that you really feel the most, and just practice them throughout the day. Spend you know three, four minutes doing one, and then you know a couple hours later, three, four minutes doing the other one. And what that's going to do is it's going to help create stability in the hips and, and and take away the reason for your for your body to think that it needs to stay tight. From a simplicity uh, sort of perspective, if you just take like 90-90, for instance, which you'll go through and you'll see the technique with that, different variations of it um, to just anytime you go watch TV or something where you're kind of plopped in front of the TV, like that's where I usually like tend to uh, work on some of these mobility moves just so it's a constant frequent thing. So it also too, it triggers you to do that uh, in, in that situation. So this is going to help to reinforce and strengthen those instabilities there in the hip. There's a really good YouTube video that I did that it, I think it's actually titled low back pain, Doug, maybe look it up. It's, it's, it's me addressing it with like the 90, 90, and the intent of it is one of the most important things that you do. So I want you to watch that. We're going to give you Prime Pro, which has got it. They're not stretches. What you're going to see in Prime Pro are not stretches. You're getting into positions and you're activating. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the intent is so important. Yeah. So there, And I know I did, uh, I, I really communicated this in, the, in this YouTube video. So as Doug's looking it up to find out the title of it. I think uh, it's how to fix low back pain. That's so, it. So how to fix low back pain on the YouTube channel. Watch that and like just do that as much as you can. Like how you kind of make an, an effort to get up and walk every hour because you have a sedentary job. Do that. Mm -hmm. Get down there and do that. Uh, and I think this you're going to notice a huge difference uh, by getting good at that. So yeah. live in that 90-90. Do you, how do you feel, Brad, when you sit with your legs crossed like this where one knee is kind of pointed out this way? Does that feel tight to you? Uh, no, not necessarily. Okay. All right. Let, let's, let's move him into another program too. Let, so prime pro will give you for the hip mobility stuff, but how about running him on symmetry? symmetry would be the one. Yeah. Symmetry yeah. or performance. Are you following a maps program, Definitely. Brad, or your own uh, programming? I'm not currently. No. Okay. okay let's yeah. do map yeah. symmetry. will yeah. help balance. So you, you do well. map symmetry with the, the prime pro 90, 90 yeah. movements, and we're going to solve this. Now, yeah. Out of curiosity, do you get muscle cramps as well? 
Um, only in, I have, uh, when I run, which is very, very little, cause, uh, I get really that, that anterior muscle on the front beside yeah. your shin, I forget what it's called. Tibialis. It comes up really, really bad. Like can only run a mile at a time type of thing. So okay. that's combat stretch before you run, just so you know. Yeah, so, so before you go into a run, yeah, this is also in prime pro races. do combat stretches before every time you run, it'll eliminate that. Yeah. Now. Um, okay. Yeah. And then the static stretching that I, that I think you should do a good one is like a good old fashioned hamstring stretch on the floor. But take something, wrap it around your feet so you can pull your your feet back. You want to pull your toes back while you do it so we get the full posterior chain stretch, not just mm -hmm. the hamstrings, but also the calves. And it's going to feel gnarly probably to you. And you want to hold yeah. it for like two to three minutes. And while you're holding that stretch, deep breathe. Don't hold. You're going to want to hold your breath. And that's actually going to take away from getting everything to relax. You want to breathe slowly through it even though it hurts. Uh, that's the way to do it. Do that before bed or, or post-workout. But again, the, you, we got to solve the stability issue to make this go away. I, I think we're going to do it. We do the things that we just talked about right now. I yeah. think we're going to unlock oh, yeah. unlock another level for you. Just You're going to address love. it right away. Yep. Awesome, guys. I really appreciate it. You got it, brother. Right on, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Thanks again, guys. All right. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, that's, I mean, really important for people to understand this. If you have tightness, if you have a muscle knot, if you have a Charlie horse, you know, anywhere where you're like, oh, push on this or that, or why does that feel so tight? There is a, your body senses an instability yeah, and it's, it's tightening it's protective things up. mode. Correct. It's trying to keep you from hurting yourself. So it, although it hurts in the moment, it's a protective mechanism. And the only way to make it go away permanently is to fix the stability issue. And then, that, and then it'll go away. By the way, too, a lot of times this can, if continued, it will turn into sometimes joint pain. This That's is right. an example of what I've been talking about with what happened with my pec injury. Pec gets injured, so what does the body do? All the muscles up here get tight because it wants to protect Restricts that. Movement. It's movement. It's afraid that if I open up, it could get hurt again. So it's been really tight for two months straight. Now I'm getting joint pain in the sho shoulder area. Right, now it's moving in the Because now it's not moving correctly. So it's not that I have a bad shoulder. It's that I have instability, weakness, and all this so that from the body. been doing that for the last two months. So I got to address that to get rid of that chronic pain also. So a lot of times people will have like, because eventually you keep yeah. going down this direction, he'll have hip pain. He'll have hip pain or low back pain, and it'll actually feel like it's in the Probably joint or spine. Pain. You take one from each plane to focus on in terms of st uh, stability is concerned, right? So you mm -hmm. got your sagittal plane, you got your frontal plane, you got your transverse plane. So, you know, there's an, in Prime Pro, we try to address each one of those within right. specific movements. Our next caller is Alyssa from Pennsylvania. Hi, Alyssa. How can we help you? Hello, hello. Hi, guys. How are, How you? are you? We're great. Good. How are you? Good, good. This is surreal, of course. And I just wanted to say thank you. Um, as a coach, I appreciate everything you guys do. You have taught me so much. I was in school for five years for this, and I feel like I learned more about connecting with people from you guys compared to anyone else. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. I, um, I guess I'll just get right into my question. It is regarding a client that I'm currently working with. So I'll just read it off. Okay. Okay. My name is... A, oh, oh, stop that. Um, <laughs> I am... <laughs> I am an online coach working primarily with around early 20s to up to like 77 year old women. I work with some men, but obviously I don't really attract males when I'm coaching people. Um, currently, I'm working with a client who has suffered from binge eating disorder, and we have consistently worked on ways to get her mindset shifted. She is also working with a psychiatrist, which I made sure from the beginning. Through our time together, she has gone down from 175 to 148 and is feeling great. However, within the past couple of weeks, her energy has gotten lower and her workouts are suffering. She is having trouble finding the strength to walk 30 minutes. After discovering this on my end, I've talked to her about upping her nutrition from about 1,675 calories to 1,800. Small increase, but that increase scared, scared her a little bit. Um, with this increase, she is now struggling and resisting to add food back in because she's afraid that she will gain weight and get back to her old body. Do you have any advice on working with a client in this situation? I'm afraid that the process has developed a new kind of eating disorder. Now, I did send this in May, and since then, I do have some updates on her. So I wasn't able to get her up to 1,800. I got her to around 
17, but I feel like she only eats like 1600 to 1650 max. Um, she has gotten more consistent with her workouts and is finding more energy. And now her weight is down, but now she wants to go even lower to 135. So I don't know how to shift. I don't know how to approach her, I guess I should say. Like, I don't know what my next advice should be. Great question. Are you yeah. working in tandem with the with psychiatrist? Her psychiatrist? Are you working with the psychiatrist? Are you talking with them? I am not, no. Okay. I, I think it's really important that you, and ask her permission, of course. Hey, okay. would you mind if I reached out to your psychiatrist just so we can work together? Just so we're on the same page. And we're on the same page. And then I would bring this to them and say, okay, what do you suggest? What kind of conversation should I have around this? Just so that you are both working uh, together. Now, in my experience, okay. in my experience, there's two things that I did in this space that uh, were really effective. One, which I've talked about before, is to focus on performance, not focus on weight whatsoever. It's about getting stronger. Now, what does that look like? It doesn't look like this. Hey, they come in and they go, hey, by the way, we're just going to focus on your strength right now. We're not going to worry about your weight. That's way too obvious. Okay. It's more like we're going to do a training block for the next eight weeks, and I'd like to see if I could get 20 pounds uh, increased on your deadlift. Uh, and here's right. why. I, I think it'll make your butt rounder. I think you're going to feel real tight. It's probably going to speed up your metabolism. That's it. You start right there. Yeah. Then you start training okay. and you start tracking her deadlift. So pick a lift or two, you start tracking it. And then when she comes in and she plateaus, which she will, say, okay, I have some ideas. Here's what I want to do. I want to add a protein shake post-workout. I think that's going to help make us stronger. Um, why add the protein shake? I think the extra protein is going to fuel the strength. I'd like to see if we can get you up five pounds next week. Then everything is geared towards strength. Everything is geared towards performance. And the reason being is it's it's very hard to not eat enough and get stronger. And what happens is when they be, so here's the deal when you have somebody that uh, is dealing with this uh, a really strong dysfunction around diet, uh, it's a hyper focus. Okay. Right. And so what we're trying to do is change your focus. And ideally what ends up happening is this client becomes somewhat hyper focused on their strength and it can happen. And when they do it and they see the bar go up in weight, they see they could do extra reps and it's celebrated and you're excited about it. And nobody talks about body fat percentage. Nobody cares about any of that stuff. And if it comes up, you say something like, Oh yeah, you know, you're probably leaner cause you're getting stronger. What do you mean? Well, you get stronger, your metabolism speeds up. You know, it's kind of cool, but really let's get another right. 10 pounds on us. And that's the celebration. It's all about that. And what, what I've had with clients with that is they start to become hyper-focused on getting stronger. Little by little, it becomes about weight on the bar, weight on the bar, weight on the bar. And then before you know it, she doesn't care about anything but getting stronger in the gym. And it feels like a success story. <clears throat> have you um, have you tried to get her not to weigh and don't count counter calories? Have you, has that been a conversation or an, have you attempted to do that yet? We have talked about it. Um, How does that go? She has very, she has a very restrictive diet. Like, doesn't eat processed foods, doesn't eat gluten, uh, and I'm afraid that when she doesn't track, she under eats even more, yeah. and then that's what caused. Like, I feel that's what caused her binge eating disorder. Yeah. Was that she was under eating throughout the day, and then she would go into nighttime just starving. Um, we have she's went on vacations and stuff and not tracked, but. Other than that, like we haven't and went what, for a period. And then what that. about the scale? Has she been able to move away from the scale? Can we get her not weighing herself? I can try for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, the only success I have with that is when she's on vacation. Yeah. And Other than that, it's like she doesn't want to go more than two days. Here's, the, here's, the, here's the conversation around the scale, okay? It's not the first thing I would say because she's going to know what you're up to. Hey, don't weigh yourself right. and stop measuring, you know, tracking your food. She's going to be like, yeah, right. Like I know what you're – it's literally – She's going to come in and be like, okay, we're going to do a six-week training block. And my goal is to see if I could get your squat up to, you know, whatever. Give her a weight. You know, we're going to add 15 pounds to your squat. Why? Well, it's, I mean, it's going to make your butt real round. And it's going to probably speed up your metabolism. definitely will speed up your metabolism. But I'd like to do a training. Like, like the goal for the next six weeks is let's see if we can get your squat up to whatever weight. And then that's all you're talking about when you train. Besides life stuff, because I'm sure you guys are friends, when you're yeah. talking about fitness, it's about mobility for the squat. It's about depth for the squat. It's about control for the squat. And then what will happen is she's going to plateau. Inevitably, she's going to plateau. 
And then the conversation is going to pop up and you'll be like, you know what? Uh, I think weighing yourself is getting in the way of us getting the squat up. Let's, can you, can you take your scale, not weigh yourself for the next three weeks? I want to see what it does to your squat. But wait till it pops up right. before you bring it up that way. So there's, <clears throat> I've had a handful of clients like this. Um, when you do that training, do you train this person? Do you see her in person? No. Oh, okay. I, just I, just zooms like. Damn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because mm -hmm. what what Every I week. yeah and, and something else that's I'm worked, glad you asked that. That makes what, it much more challenging. It does. Yeah, this it does make yeah. it because <laughs> what I would do is I'd actually tell them they can't weigh, but I'll weigh you every day, and I and I would assure them that like mm -hmm. I and I'd make my client turn around backwards on the scale, and I'd be like, don't worry, I'm gonna keep track of our weight, and if I see anything if out of normal going the wrong way, I'll make sure we adjust. But I I want to see it just for Nick. You know, I don't want you to see it because I don't want a one pound up or down fluctuation for you to change your behaviors. We have a plan to get strong. That's the focus. And so that works really well when you have them in person. This does make it a little right. bit more challenging when you can't control it's, that. Uh, and now as far as you know, what you said earlier, now you said she feels a little better, but in your original question, you said she was having trouble walking or finding the 30 strength. Minutes. Yeah. That sounds more like a nutrient deficiency and less like she's not eating enough calories. 1675, uh, it's typically not low enough to make you feel like you can't walk for 30 minutes unless she's not being honest or right. there's an actual nutrient deficiency. So that might be something to look at as well, like a multivitamin, <laughs> like, or, or have her right. get her nutrients tested. That's to me, when I hear somebody say, I, my God, I can't even walk for 30 minutes. I'm like, okay, there's B vitamin deficiency or an iron deficiency. Possibly sodium. Something, right? So a nutrient test would be good. Does she take, right. does she take like an electrolyte at all? Does she take like LMNT or anything? I recommend it. I've sent her many links of okay. like element and okay. a bunch of different ones on Amazon because that was something that, because she doesn't really add any salt to her diet. At yeah. All. You said she's so, not, a, she doesn't eat processed food. You yeah. said, right. She's a whole food no. person. Yeah. So, and she's mm -hmm. that low a calorie and whole foods. I'd have she her doing, I'd have her doing two of those packets a day. And then, and then the psych okay. and then because yeah. she's working with a psychiatrist, I'm assuming she's on meds. Uh, it's so important to talk a to the psychiatrist because Number one, you want to be on the same page. But second, she may be on a medication that is causing her to feel mm. like this. Mm. And the psychiatrist might not be fully aware because you're the trainer. So you'd be like, listen, her energy really significantly went down. Are there any medications that she just went on? I'd like to work with you. Um, is there anything you'd like me to focus on when it comes to her diet and exercise? Things you want me to say, things you don't want me to say. That's how I would approach right. that. No, I agree with that. I think getting in contact with them would be my number one step after this call for sure. Yeah. Cause but. she could be put on a med. Sometimes they'll put, uh, you know, anorexics or, or bulimics on SSRIs or, um, you know, other kind of, um, psychiatric meds. And sometimes the side effects of those is you, you have no energy mm -hmm. sometimes. So you know, it's definitely important to work, uh, in tandem with them. Okay. All right. We'll do No, this, this has helped a lot. Um, I like, I love her and I want her to succeed, but I was so afraid that I was developing another eating disorder while we were working together. Cause good, good she's definitely one that I feel goes on information overload, like takes Dr. Gundry's like takes yeah. all these people's advice and I'm like, let's rein it in. <laughs> let's yes. bring it down to the basics. But yeah. Yeah. And, in, and again, performance, I'd focus on performance yeah. for sure. And so in other words, you can talk about nutrition as it relates to performance, as it okay. relates to strength, as it relates to how she feels. Okay. We'll do. We'll do. Thank you so much, guys. You got it. Um, I also have a comment. I, if you don't mind me saying something really quick. <laughs> sure. That's, only is if it, it's a good wait, one. If it's a good on. one. <laughs> is it constructive criticism? Because <laughs> no. It is, it is not constructive criticism. Okay. Go, go ahead. But go. I was listening to... I forget it might have which episode one that you aired last week talking about clothes in the 2000s, how they haven't really changed uh, Yeah. as a 30 year old. Um, it's not that they haven't changed to early 2000s is now trending again. Yeah. Oh. So we've gone back to this that's how old we are, dude. I told Sal, right. If we talked no, to somebody, who's, You're not I said, head. if we talked are. to somebody who's in 30, they would say it's totally different. They see it from a different lens than we do. Right? Hey, Adam has such a tough time 100%. accepting that he's not cool anymore. No, that's not <laughs> yes, it. Does. That's not it. I'm yes, very, it I'm very aware that I'm unaware. I'm very aware of that. I'm very aware of that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, and go ahead and tell I, tell, yeah. tell Sal sorry, tell Sal that I'm the coolest one of the three of us. That's, that's, <laughs> not, my, that's not that hard though. Yeah. <laughs> the it's, bar's low. Yeah, that's, no, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that, Lisa. Step. That makes sense. I have. Right. Thank you guys so thank much. I it. will listen to you guys very shortly. All right, you got it. Thank, thank you. You. <clears throat> you definitely are the coolest. That one. is. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's not saying much, right? Uh, so tallest midget. I. You, this wow. Is, yeah. This yeah. is. I think you can say uh, this is. Uh, this right here is so hard to handle in person. Yeah, doing no, this, I'm so glad you asked that because I'm like, doing oh, this no. virtually. Man, that's hard. I yep. mean, because I want to. So, because there's there's multiple things I'm thinking when if this person, uh, I'm like, she would, could be lying to me. You said that, yep. right? She could be obsessively weighing and like, man, I and also her energy levels. Like you just hearing the the walking thing. You you see her walking to work out with you. You probably know she's malnutrition. You're yes. gonna pick up yes. on it. So, man, you these things that I would normally be able to do, I don't have that. I've got to do this all virtually. Man, really that's really hard tough. to read. That Very, I mean, that's a tough client. Far. Period. Yeah. That's really. tough. Tough, it's so much harder to train uh, someone virtually yeah. and be successful than yeah. it is in person. Just from all, you don't have those touch points. You can't read things without them actually telling you. And oftentimes clients don't even know. Oh, yeah. They don't even know to They're tell blissfully you. blissfully unaware. But I got to say this to trainers. If you're working with somebody that has a, a eating disorder, is working with a therapist or a psychologist, psychiatrist, it is imperative that you communicate with this professional and work along with them because there are things that you can say or do that seem innocuous, not a big deal, that could set them back. Yeah. You just don't know. You just don't know. So work with the expert, and then you'll be so much more effective. And they can reinforce you know, some of your ideas as well. That's right. Look, if you love Mind Pump, do this. Go to Instagram. Find us. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Stefano, and Adam's at Mind Pump Adam. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right? Of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher.